All right. Welcome to the next episode of Who's Got Next. Uh, I'm Seth Barry here with Jared Hallis, and we're here to talk about some some Michigan football recruiting. Uh, you know, obviously there's a there's a lot of news you know going on in the world of Michigan football right now, and and recruiting is a uh, you know a little bit uh, you know a little bit weird right now with the Jim Harbaugh situation and you know things going on with that. And uh, today's a big day as well. We're recording on Friday. January 13th. So this is the, um, you know, it's a, the end of, of the dead period. So you can have, you know, uh, recruits back on, you know, visiting campus, visiting Ann Arbor to, um, you know, to get some guys on campus at Michigan. Uh, so coaches can connect with them in that way. So, um, you know, that's a big day in that sense. And, and there's a lot to talk about Jared in in, uh, in terms of recruiting, but first of all, you know, how, how's it going over there? And, uh, you know, how was, how was your new year? We're great, man. I, I know that we were supposed to, to get on here yesterday. Had a pretty scary storm roll through. Um, but happy to be here. New Year's going well so far. Um, excited to uh, to get the ball rolling with the recruiting coverage for the 2024 class and, and to get this podcast going for this year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so it's the the first and foremost thing I think we have to talk about and in, in, in the biggest news uh, right now is is the situation obviously with with Jim Harbaugh at Michigan and mm-hmm. whether he's you know obviously he's he's uh he's interviewed with the Broncos virtually uh you know there's been some NFL talk there's also been uh you know talks of him um you know talking with athletic director Ward Manuel and President Santa Ono about getting a restructured deal done and you know the I think that the consensus is that, you know, he, he likes Michigan and he wants to stay at Michigan, but you know, he, he could have a, you know, always have his options open and have a, you know, half a foot out the door as well to where if an NFL opportunity comes available and Michigan doesn't uh, get this done in terms of a restructured deal or something that, you know, both parties can agree on, then, then he could be open to an NFL option. So that's kind of where we're at with that. And that obviously relates to recruiting uh, in the sense to where uh, for the second, yeah, for the second year in a row, you're having a situation uh, to where, you know, great momentum, the momentum in the program, uh, obviously with coming off of two big 10 championships, uh, you beat Ohio state two years in a row and you figure, you know, this is, this is really good. This is great momentum. Uh, You figure the recruiting, trail is is going to be uh, hot you know with guys just wanting to come to Michigan and uh, maybe you can put together you know a top 10 class uh, obviously we saw the 2023 class uh, wasn't you know not not that it won't pan out but it wasn't you know coming off a big 10 title uh, you would expect it to be you know to rank a little higher mm-hmm. uh, you know obviously we all talk about the 2018 class where that class was ranked a little lower, right? And they ended up having some guys who who really contributed and, and had great careers at Michigan. So by no means does that mean the 23 class isn't going to pan out. But if you consistently have classes that, you know, are outside of the top 15 or so, how sustainable is that going to be in a program? So sure. um, so the first thing I kind of wanted to talk about today in, in uh, relating to that is, is five-star quarterback Jaden Davis, uh, the quarterback from Providence Day. He's expected to. Uh, he's been expected to to commit to Michigan most likely for a while now. Um, you know, one of our national reporters at Rivals interviewed him earlier in the week, uh, and he was talking about you know he's he's kind of waiting to see what what Jim Harbaugh is going to do and waiting to see uh, what coaches are are going to decide. And, and I don't think it's any secret that uh, you know that that's a big topic of conversation. And and I think Davis is kind of. Uh, holding his process up uh, based off of what's happening with Jim Harbaugh. Obviously there's other schools that he's communicating to and talking with that could, um, you know, that could come into play. Um, but I think the the longer this drags on, you know, the worse this is for Michigan. And I just wanted Jared to, to get some of your thoughts on the Jaden Davis situation and uh, you know, your opinion on where that stands right now. Yeah. I mean, when I, when I came on to the Maze and Blue Review in, in December, it seemed like it was no doubt at all that, that Jaden Davis was the top guy um, and, and the priority. And even for that time period, obviously the staff was trying to close out the 2023 class, or at least for the early period. But there was still such a, uh, um, I guess, just a, a vibe that, that Jaden Davis was like the number one guy on the board. And, you know, someone who, again, like you said, 
a lot of people were expecting to have made that commitment by now. Um, and you have to wonder, you know, with, with what happened last year, maybe he, you know, thought let's wait and see if that happens again this year. So I don't pull the trigger early. And then now here we are and it is happening again. Um, and obviously again, like you said, he, he's keeping an eye on that. Like he talked about with, with Adam, um, not to give away too much of, of his story, but he's keeping a close eye on it. And, uh, you know, whether or not Harbaugh stays is going to, is going to be a big factor in his decision. Uh, so certainly it, it affects recruiting a lot. And um, I know that, that a lot of people internally are probably super tired of it because it maybe isn't a great look for them. You know, they should be closing these guys in a lot of people's eyes, but at the end of the day, I mean, when your head coach is, is interviewing with the NFL every year, um, or at least rumored to be, then it certainly has an impact, especially, you know, right around this time when, again, like you said, just won another Big Ten championship and, and you know, competed for the college football playoff. Things should be going better, um, but here we are. Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's telling as well um, when you have – you know, you know, people talk about this being a problem and how it affects recruiting, but when it is when it's affecting your your number one target in the class, you know, kind of your prize possession target um, in 2024, then then that's you know that's a concern. Uh, and, and it's a position obviously that Michigan needs to to hit on this class because they missed out on a quarterback in, in 2023. You know, and and who's to say what happens with with JJ McCarthy? You know, after this next season, if he has you know, a really good year. Um, I'm sure they have some NFL scouts that are, that are uh, looking at him. So, so that quarterback situation is something that Michigan has to, to hit on in this class. And I think, uh, you know, considering what the situation is, um, you know, th this is, this is concerning. Obviously if, if it comes out, you know, in these next few days, uh, you know, once we get, I, I doubt anything would be announced on Saturday or Sunday with the NFL playoffs and such, but, um, if we get to Monday and and it's announced that Harbaugh, you know, has a restructured you know contract and he's going to stay at Michigan and and whatever, you know, at least for now, at least for this year, I think everything could be, you know, the dust can settle and and you know Davis and that that was a term he used, right? That just waiting for the dust to settle. That that Davis could look at that and say, okay, he's he's here, he's firm in his commitment to Michigan, Harbaugh uh, in that sense, and and Davis would then, you know. Uh, make the commitment himself and you know that would be the the uh the best case scenario and kind of to get michigan started off uh in this 2024 class you know obviously they have a few commits already but that would be that'd be a big uh, momentum boost uh for this class considering you know what happened in 23 and and uh and, and this 24 class has a really good chance to to be really good i mean the guys that have committed right now are are um are, are high caliber players and uh, you know, historically, we've seen if Michigan has a, a little bit of a down class of one year, they they always come back and, you know, they get in the top 12 or 10 uh, the next year and, and, and bounce back really strong. So, um, you know, there's no reason to not expect that uh, this year so long as, you know, the Harbaugh situation works itself out. And obviously, if it doesn't, then, then you know, we're going to have we're going to be having entirely different conversations. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my outlook on it. And, you know, Jared, do you have anything else to, to kind of add uh, to that? I just think, I, I mean, you hit, you hit on most of it. I think it's, it's a little scary because, you know, it's obvious that the Jaden Davis is, is their guy and, and has been for a while. And, you know, we've, we've discussed on Maze and Blue Review multiple quarterback targets, but at the end of the day, it's uh it's no secret again, that, that he's their guy. And not to say they're not recruiting other people, but I, I worry that they would almost, you know, go have to go back to square one uh, and go back to the drawing board to see, you know, okay, this didn't work out because of this reason. Who can we go for now? And like you said, they, they really need to hit in this class. Um, and I just hope that, that all this can be wrapped up soon. And, and hopefully once it is wrapped up, you and I will be in for a, a busy couple months, you know, covering – a lot of guys uh, hopefully committing to the program now that, that uh, the dust has been settled. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, with, with Davis, it's like you have, I mean, these other programs are still reaching out, right. That are, that are interested. Uh, you have Clemson, you know, reaching out, you have, you have Tennessee, you know, obviously that's, that's been a fun offense to watch in terms of the passing game the last year. 
Um, you know, these other programs are waiting, you know, just for the the tips to scale uh, the right way and and say, okay, maybe we can slide in and and steal them, um, you know, at the last minute. So so you have to, like I said, the longer this goes, the worse it is for Michigan, and hopefully, just you know, the Harbaugh situation will settle, and then and then Davis, you know, will then look at that and say, okay, everything's good now, and and obviously that'll, you know, once the Harbaugh situation does uh, settle, it'll be beneficial for the whole 24 class and just so they can get this rolling uh, like they want to. But, but um, you know, aside from that, let's move on and talk about some guys that, um, you know, despite the Harbaugh situation are expected to, to make Michigan visits in the next couple of weeks and, and guys who've already been there, uh, you know, several times, all these guys that we're going to talk about have been, uh, you know, the first, the first guy I wanted to, to talk about here was uh, Jacob Odin, who's a, uh, he's an in-state, uh, safety uh, from from Harper Woods. He's a four star recruit. Uh, Michigan has been in contact with him for for quite some time. He's visited Michigan over. Uh, I think he's getting close to a dozen times. He's he's visited about um you know definitely over ten times. So he's been in Ann Arbor. He's familiar with with the program. Uh, his his dad is actually uh, the coach at Harper Woods. So uh, he's had a good relationship with, with coach Steve, Steve Klinscale, uh, the Michigan defensive back coach and co-defensive coordinator. They go back a long way. And, uh, you know, I talked to Odin and he, you know, he has a lot of interest in Michigan. Uh, he talks about, you know, their, their, uh, you know, their ability, you know, the defensive backs to break on the ball. Um, you know, when he watches them on TV, he, he can kind of discusses about, you know, the relationships he's able been able to build with the coaches and the contact he's had with the program. And he's going to be on campus, uh, not this weekend, but, but next weekend. So, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be, he'll be back again. And, uh, you know, he's also visited Michigan state six or seven times. So, you know, I, I think this is, uh, um, you know, he named a top five recently, but Michigan and Michigan state are, you know, this could definitely be a turn out to be a two horse race in the end. Um, but Jared, uh, what, what are your thoughts about, about Jacob Odin and the fact that he's, you know, visiting Michigan again, um, you know, next weekend. And, and if you can kind of give some, some thoughts about him. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's definitely trending in that direction that you were talking about, you know, being a, a two horse race between the two in state programs. It's going to be tough. I mean, I think a lot of people on the Michigan state side would say that, that they're right there neck and neck with, with Michigan and this recruitment. And, you know, at this point, it's sort of hard to tell because he has visited both schools a good bit. Um, he's, he's had, similar comments about each one just relationships wise and and um you know i think i think the development is one area where michigan really needs to to punch in order to close this one um you know that's not a knock on, on michigan state but when you look at uh at the two programs and you just look at what each school can do i just Michigan state may have the edge especially in, in recent history um so relationships wise i i think that both schools are right there um, uh, Michigan State's been been involved for a while. And Michigan, as you mentioned, has done a great job of, of getting him on campus a lot. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I think Odin's a really good player, though, and uh, certainly somebody that you want to have in the 2024 class. Um, and getting him on board early could could you know help that that defensive side of the ball in this class shape up really nicely with, with him as a leader of the class. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's been, you know, I agree. He's been very high on, on Michigan state as well. And, you know, just looking at, at some of the comments he's made on them, you know, they do align uh, very similarly with, uh, you know, what he, what he talked about Michigan as well. So, um, you know, I, I could definitely see, you know, obviously it, it could turn out to be a two horse race. He, he named a top five. He said, you know, that, that could change, um, you know, so down the road, if, if there's, you know, other schools that, that come back into play or contact him more, you know, he could, he could change that up, but, um, but yeah, I, I think the biggest thing I noted with Odin was he's really big on, you know, that relationship building, right. And, and what, you know, the coaches are and what the program are going to do for him in terms of, um, you know, just, just wanting him and reaching out to him and, uh, um, you know, just establishing that connection with, with what he wants and, and what he wants um, in his recruitment and ultimately when he enrolls into the school. So, so yeah, those are going to be big. It's going to be big for Michigan to just continue to to reach out and connect and and uh, you know host them on campus and um, you know host them for visits and and things like that. But um, you know, really intriguing prospect, and I think this is going to be an intriguing uh, 
you know, race to, to kind of watch uh, as this goes on uh, with Jacob Odin. So, so yeah. Um, and then let's move on now to a couple of guys that uh, are not in the state of Michigan, but still in the Midwest and actually in the state of Ohio, uh, two guys who are expected to visit uh, this weekend. So uh, Jordan Marshall is a 2024 running back um, from the state of Ohio. Um, waiting for his bio to come up. Here we go. Um, so yeah, from, from Cincinnati, he's a 5'11", 195 pound back. Um, you know, he's, he's expected to visit Michigan this weekend. Uh, obviously, you know, Ohio state, um, he has an Ohio state offer. He's from the state of Ohio. And, and with both these guys, we talk about, you know, uh, the, the main, you know, I don't want to say the leader right now, but obviously Ohio state, you know, when you, you're, you're that highly rated of a prospect, you, you know, you're, you're from Ohio and you have an Ohio state offer. That's, that's, uh, that's going to be hard to, to overcome uh, for any program that's, that's competing with that. Uh, that being said, you know, he has been able to, you know, to establish a good connection with the Michigan coaches and, and Mike Hart's done a, done a good job there with him. Uh, you know, it's, it remains one of Michigan's top targets in the cycle. Uh, and if it's someone that they can, um, you know, that they can get, certainly they're gonna, they're gonna take him. Uh, this is, this would be a second time there. Uh, if he does end up visiting this weekend as planned. So, you know, he visited in October, had a lot of good things to say about, about Michigan. Then I believe it was during the, the Michigan state game, um, that he visited. So, so yeah, th this is going to be something that that'll be interesting to, to see if Michigan can, can hang in there in this recruitment. Uh, the fact that they've, they would have had him on multiple times now, uh, is, is promising. So, so yeah, uh, Jordan, what, or, um, Jared, what do you think, uh, what do you think about Jordan Marshall and, and some of his either traits as a prospect or, or just what you think about uh, Michigan's chances with him? Yeah. Like you said, I mean, when you're, when you're dealing with, with the in-state schools and, and, you know, when it's uh, a school like Ohio state, it's, it's certainly tough. To, uh, to pull these guys away from, you know, their home state and their uh, program that they may have grown up a fan of. However, Michigan has been involved here a little bit longer than Ohio State. And a lot of times when you see Michigan go into Ohio and win those recruiting battles, sometimes it's because they feel like, uh, like you know, Michigan just believed in them more and believed not only more, but first. And that's a credit to the staff at Michigan for being able to identify those guys and, you know, go in and poach people away from Ohio State. And, you know, for reasons like that, that that's why they're able to win two times in a row and, and you know, being trending in the in the direction that they're in. But, yeah, I mean, I think I think Ohio State is certainly going to be a contender here. Um, I think they messed up by not prioritizing him earlier on. Um, and I think I think that might tip the scale towards Michigan, at least for now. Um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of time for this to progress and, and you know, kind of gives me the vibe of a, of a recruitment that could be um, uh, a long one. So certainly one to watch. Marshall's a good prospect. Um, and if, if they're able to go in there and win that one, that would be a fantastic win. But again, you know, just going back to what we were talking about at the beginning, I think, you know, having uh, some, some, some job security um, in place for, for Harwell and, and all that stuff would, would, pay dividends not only in this recruitment but in many others as well yeah yeah you know all these guys that are going to visit you know not only this weekend but um down the road you know if they if they come to visit this weekend and then you get that announcement you know right off the heels of the visit that harbaugh you know is staying and he's returning and you know you have all the assistant coaches intact then that's just going to be you know another layer of of um you know, of positivity uh, that Michigan can build off of. And, and hopefully with, with some of these guys, you know, who are visiting this weekend, next weekend, you know, down the road, uh, that's going to be, that's going to be a big sell that obviously, you know, the, the assistant coaches that, that you're uh, building connections with. And uh, you know, in this case, case of Jordan Marshall, uh, Mike Hart, you know, that, that he's going to be the running backs coach, you know, for this year and beyond. And, and that you're uh, you know, you're establishing those connections with people who are going to be around for a little while. Um, you mentioned something, Jared, that that's very intriguing to me uh, because you mentioned, you know, Michigan being in a little earlier on this recruitment here, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with a guy from the state of Ohio. And that's kind of been a narrative mm -hmm. um, with guys who have who have committed to Michigan that have been from Ohio. Obviously, Steve Klinkskill has the connection there, you know, with the Youngstown, being a Youngstown native, and he's right. done well. 
um, mm-hmm. especially lately in that in that area. But but the consensus is, and granted, it's it comes from mostly guys that you know probably didn't have an Ohio State offer, or you know they 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 felt slighted because hey, you know I'm I'm a pretty highly touted prospect, or I'm a four star, you know maybe high three star, whatever. But I'm not gonna an offer from Ohio State. They're like you know, what's the deal? And then they end up committing to a school like Michigan who did show interest in them and, and uh, was in on them in the process all along and built the relationships and built the connections. And I think there's, you know, uh, according to, you know, at least some of those, those guys that there's a consensus that they felt kind of slighted. And, and that was, that's kind of what I want to bring up with this next uh, prospect to an extent is this um, is Bryce West, you know, he's another, another Ohio guy. Um, you know, a uh, four-star uh, defensive back from Cleveland. Uh, he is, he's, he's expected to visit Michigan. Uh, I believe it'll be his third time uh, on campus this weekend. So he's, he's establishing a good relationship with, with the Wolverines. Uh, you know, he visited for a game in the fall as well. And, and this is a guy that, you know, again, he, and I, I don't know what to make of this. I haven't spoken to, to Bryce West yet. Um, but I, you know, I noticed he tweeted something out the other day that basically it was along the lines of, you know, hey, if Ohio State, you know, drops a ball on my recruitment or misses out on me, then that's, you know, that's going to be a big loss. And I know it, it kind of gave me the vibes of, of uh, you know, kind of what we were talking about, you know, about, it, it, um, you know, if Ohio State doesn't continue to build the relationship, make the connection, like, okay, like maybe I'll go somewhere else, you know, if you don't close on me. So, I don't know. It, it, you could have taken it in multiple ways. Like it could be, you know, obviously Ohio state, you know, could be the favorite and, and that, you know, he's, he's looking strongly at them still um, obviously, but, but Hey, if they mess up a little bit or, or don't, or don't reach out, you know, like they should, then, then maybe he'll go elsewhere. What, what is, I guess, what are some of your opinions on, on maybe on that? You don't have to talk about that if you don't want, but just on Bryce West, um, you know, as a whole and, and what Michigan, or, or where Michigan might stand in his recruitment. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it's interesting um, just with the, the in-state guys in Ohio kind of – it sort of seems like there might be a theme. You know, you and I aren't sitting here trying to hammer in a point that Ohio State can't recruit because we know that isn't true. But at the same time, um, as you mentioned, there's been some scenarios where Michigan has been able to win some some good battles against them on the recruiting grounds because of their ability to identify and prioritize these guys earlier on. West may not be as much of an example of that as Marshall is. And just going back to Marshall for a second, he did he he got his offer very recently. The timing of, of that offer was super interesting due to the fact that Ohio State didn't sign a running back in their 2023 class. So it's almost like, oh shoot, we I mean you could say similar to to the quarterback situation for for, for Michigan and for Jaden Davis, but it's it's different because Jaden Davis has had the Michigan offer. He's been a priority. What's different is that Ohio State is like, oh shoot, we we didn't sign a running back. We probably need to uh, to take a look at a guy in our home state that's pretty high rated. Um, we you know we may want to we may want to give that guy an offer before Michigan comes in here and steals him again. Again, I don't know if uh, if going back to West, it seems like Dave been more on the ball as far as his recruitment goes um but there's no doubt that there's a lot of interest in michigan as well um which is good i mean it's what you love to see obviously it's considered probably the greatest rivalry in college football on the field and you know it seems like every year there's some really fun recruiting battles between the two as well yeah i think with you know with these two guys uh, we talk about weston and marshall um you know, if Michigan even wins one of these battles, I mean, that that's a huge win. Absolutely. Uh, you know, especially when you talk I mean, specifically the running back position, right? I guess, you know, corner as well, the, the defense, defensive back with, you know, with uh, DJ Turner and, uh, you know, Jamon Green and some guys leaving for the NFL and being young at that position this year, you know, that, that, that'll be a position of need as well. But, you know, the running back too, you know, with, with Corum, you know, he's coming back, but he'll be, he'll be gone after, after next year. Um, and then, you know, Donovan Edwards, depending on what he does after next year, you know, you're going to have a need for, for a running back. So, you know, either of these guys would be, would be a huge win in a, in a really good kid. And if they, if they were able to, uh, 
to, to win one of these battles, it would just be a, a huge win on the trail uh, for mm-hmm. Michigan. So, so yeah, it would. Man. It would. And I, again, I, I think that at some point we're, you know, we may have to start narrowing in on, on West being a, a two horse race, similar to talking about Odin. I think that, that this could be a Michigan Ohio state type of thing. Um, and like you said, if, if they're able to just get one, it's already a big win and they've already got Luke Hamilton out of Ohio. So that's a, that's a win. Obviously he didn't have an Ohio state offer, um, but just another example of, of, you know, the Wolverines dipping into, uh, into the state of Ohio, pulling out a four, uh, five-star prospect in some cases. And um, I just, I, I would feel like if I was an Ohio state fan, that's, that's, that's a dangerous trend. And I don't, I wouldn't enjoy that if I was an Ohio State fan. I mean, you you got to keep the top talent in the state, and um, you know there's there's certainly some risk for that not to be the case um, this year. And obviously, we saw it last year in the 2023 class as well. Yeah, I mean, especially them. You know, I mean, Michigan's coming off two wins in the rivalry. Not not to say that Michigan has you know reestablished dominance by any means in the rivalry, but based off of you know, hey, you know if you're prioritizing guys more so out of state and not getting, you know, some of your in-state guys, uh, you know, a lot of those in-state guys are going to understand the rivalry a little better too, you know, um, just growing up with it and, and those type of things. And once you, you lose a couple in a row, you know, maybe, maybe you have to, to kind of adjust like, Hey, let's make sure we keep this in-state talent, you know, in Ohio and, you know, make sure, which if they do prioritize that, like I'm, I'm sure they'll, do just fine in that regard um you know and obviously they they recruit very well and they're you know they're they're a really good program and they're they're always going to bring in talent but it's a matter of uh you know culturally you know i think michigan has has recruited you know very well over these last uh, few years in, in terms of you know getting guys to fit their culture and and understanding you know um the type of football they need to play and and the type of energy they need to bring to these rivalry games so um you know just as a side note there but but yeah, all this stuff will be interesting to, to follow, you know, as we go along uh, in Michigan football recruiting. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the Maize and Blue Review uh, for all your recruiting updates, uh, especially for your for your Jim Harbaugh updates right now. Uh, you know, our publisher, Josh Henske, is doing, out to Josh. <laughs> yeah, done, done a great job, uh, you know, being on top of all this and, and getting inside information that uh, that is that's really good and, and really valuable if you're a Michigan fan uh, to keep up on on all of that Jim Harbaugh news, uh, you know, and, and to keep up on recruiting news and, and what, whatever else you need for, for Michigan sports, you know, Michigan basketball, Michigan football, we've, we've got it all uh, here at the amazing blue review. So Jared, any final thoughts uh, for today uh, as far as what we talked about or, or anything else for you? Yeah. I mean, towards the end there, it kind of felt like we were talking about like a, a recruiting rivalry um, more so than we were just covering a couple uh, recruits that are visiting this week that kind of, Kind of got off on a little tangent there, but I, I like it. I mean, it's certainly a topic that needs to be talked about. So it was, it was fun. Always enjoy it. And I'm, uh, again, I'm, I'm excited to be back doing this for, for 2023. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it'll be exciting, you know, getting things kicked off. And obviously there's still a few, a few 23 targets out there to, um, you know, to, to keep an eye on as, as the, you know, the February signing period uh, isn't too long away at this point, but but uh, you know we're we're getting full swing in the twenty four class, so it'll be fun to see you know what comes out of these you know out of this weekend, out of the guys that are visiting, you know, out of the the next weekend, and there'll obviously be more guys that'll you know that'll uh, that'll news will come out to to say that they're visiting as well. So there'll be more guys you know that'll down the road that uh, that we'll hear about taking visits and uh, Michigan coaches reaching out to and things like that. So so yeah for. So for Jared Hallis, uh, I'm Seth Berry uh, signing off at, at the Amazing Blue Review. Uh, we'll see you guys next time, and uh, thanks for listening.